السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو گیم چینجر آئی ایم مریم ضیا افریقہ از سیکنڈ لارجسٹ کانٹیننٹ آف دا ورلڈ ود ففٹی فور اسٹیٹس دا جیو اکنامک امپورٹنس اینڈ سگنیفیکنس آف افریقہ از انکریزنگ ود ایچ پاسنگ ایئر اینڈ اٹ از بینگ سین ایز کانٹیننٹ آف دا فیوچر بائی دا میجر پارز پاکستان ہیز آلویز مینٹینڈ فرینڈلی ریلیشنز ود مینی افریقن کنٹریز سنس انڈیپینڈنس But when we look at the trade volume between Pakistan and African countries, it is very low. However, in 2013, Pakistan initiated its Look Africa policy. According to this policy, Pakistan would be enhancing connectivity with different African countries and 10 important African countries were selected for this purpose. These countries include Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Sudan, Tanzania, Nigeria, Kenya, Senegal, Ethiopia, and South Africa. In today's program, we will discuss how Pakistan's relations with African countries have evolved over the years. We will also discuss and explore the prospects of connectivity between Pakistan and Africa. To discuss this and more, I'm joined in the studios by former ambassador, uh, Ms. Naila Chohan. Welcome to the program. With her, we are joined as usual by Mr. Sheryar Khan, who is expert in uh, international affairs. Welcome to the program. And with, hi- with him, we are joined online by Dr. Hastan Jawed, who is an economist and senior analyst. Welcome to the program. So, um, Ambassador uh, Naila, uh, let me start with you. Uh, first of all, when we talk about Pakistan and relations between African countries, they have evolved over the years. But uh, we, uh, when we look at this recent development of Look Africa policy, you were involved in the negotiations when the, this policy was being Drafting. formulated and yeah. da- drafted. So, uh, what were the main objectives that Pakistan launched and initiated this policy? Uh, well, uh, basically, as you said, Pakistan and Africa uh, relations, African countries today, because it's a continent with many countries. Mm, 54 countries, of exactly. course. Exactly. So we have very strong foundation of our relationship since their independence and our independence. Uh, subsequently, we have been uh, working but not developing or encashing on the political goodwill between our Pakistan and this region. Uh, the Look Africa policy came because uh, I was at that time additional foreign secretary dealing with Middle East and Africa and we thought that Africa was such a large continent and we already have such a strong political uh, you know, goodwill amongst mm-hmm. uh, the countries of that continent and Pakistan that we need to uh, encash it for the mutual benefit. Mm-hmm. So we also started having uh, diplomats Uh, from these countries, even those where we don't have a mission to get training in our foreign service academy because we thought that this would be, uh, they will become our ambassadors. Similarly, we have had uh, since quite some time defense (coughs) cooperation (coughs) with a lot of these countries Mm. and their mm, soldiers, officers come and get training in our institutions whether it's military academy or air force or different Navy. So, uh, we needed to now institutionalize it mm, of course. and consolidate uh, all the work that was being done mm. since uh, our independence, mm. but it was more like in silos. So, lo- uh, look Africa policy was that the government should now start looking at it in an institutionalized manner. Right. So, Mr. Shehjar, when we talk about this policy that was launched back in 2013, uh, how do you view uh, the progress of this policy uh, so far? Uh, Mariam, thank you for inviting me. And before we start off with the analysis, uh, I would like to say that historically, Africa as a continent, which is the second largest in the world, has been a victim of the global colonial project. Mm. So, that is one of the reasons why Africa has been historically riddled with the poverty, Uh, economic uncertainty, there are also a lot of security issues Hmm. and historically northern Africa if we talk about uh, There there are a lot of commonalities if we look at Pakistan and Africa like there is a youth bulge going on in Africa, there is a youth bulge in Pakistan as well. So historically uh, Africa has been more dependent on the European countries for their trade needs. And uh, as we know, uh, because of the economic uncertainties in Africa, the products that are imported from uh, Europe have historically been a very high cost. 
So it's a golden opportunity for Pakistan mm. to basically, uh, since Pakistan is also looking outwards, it, uh, Africa is a good market for low cost products that Pakistan can basically replace that they're already mm. getting from uh, uh, Europe. Hmm. So uh, historically when it comes to Northern Africa, Pakistan has had like very good relations uh, for example with uh, Egypt, uh, Algeria, uh, if you look at Nigeria, hmm. we've had like good uh, uh, cooperation. If you look at East Africa, uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, they also have like a historical pop Pakistani population. A lot of people don't know that a lot of people migrated during the British colonial era and they basically started working in Kenya and Tanzania. So they basically relate themselves uh, back with Pakistan. Right. right. So uh, we have to like use these historical linkages and the goodwill that has been built uh, throughout these years and like start focusing on uh, Africa as a market. Right. Dr. Hassan, when we talk about Look Africa policy, what are some key areas of cooperation between Pakistan and African countries? There are uh, actually, uh, Africa is way too lucrative market. Uh, it is very unfortunate that uh, till now we have not uh, placed any policy. Uh, Look Africa was a good initiative, but unfortunately it was not been, uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, create any dimension. Uh, if I talk about some major, uh, I mean, dimensions about uh, the, uh, on the trade aspect, which is oil and natural gas, agriculture products, uh, minerals and mine, textile, clothing and other. So one of the most important and major area was, is with the total population of Africa is approximately is 1.32 billion and 16.72% of the world populations uh, inhabiting uh, 54 countries. Uh, uh, Africa is a lucrative, of, of course, uh, destination for the many, including Pakistan. But I would like to especially talk about the Pakistan pharmaceutical sector, which has been identified as a uh, sunrise export sector of the country, and companies can set a site of Africa aiming for the population of 1.2 recent uh, uh, people. So the main competition in the market of pharma in India and China, however, mm. with the uh, recent death caused by the Indian medicine in African region, Pakistan industry has a huge opportunity. Now I'm focusing on the huge concern which has a huge opportunity and uh, market to capture. Also with the global pharmaceutical market are in flux due to the major restructuring in the term of both demand and supply. So the, this present Pakistan with a unique opportunity if the sector can take timely action, there is an opportunity to strategically enter the global off uh, patent uh, drug market that will be worth about uh, 7 billion uh, uh, USD dollar in the bread uh, generic and USD 381 billion in generic by two, uh, 2025 if we start doing that. But then there is even greater potential for the vaccines in developing country for which Pakistan can capture and we are all well aware of the potential of our food and textile industry. However, we need a strict action and implement, implementation of the Look Africa policy, which has been much delayed. But uh, right. one of the most right. important sector, uh, uh, one important thing and one most important initiative, I would like to ask the foreign, foreign uh, uh, affair to make the policy about the commercial consular deployed in Africa as soon as possible in the different region. Otherwise, mm. our trade potential is not been, uh, uh, we cannot exploit that uh, potential in a very better way. So there are a lot, many things. Of uh, course, there, there, there the is a lot of potential when we talk about these areas of cooperation. But like Dr. Dr. Hasnan is mentioning about Ms. Naila, that this policy has not been as effective like we wanted. So what have been the challenges in implementation of uh, these uh, policies because you were closely uh, looking after and were part of the negotiations when this po policy was being formulated? Uh, there are many factors. A mm, relationship is always two-sided. So you have to have a similar response from the other side as well. Hmm. And uh, I would often and through your program even now request our uh, ambassadors of African countries who are based in Islamabad to also uh, be more proactive in uh, promoting trade between Pakistan and uh, African countries. Uh, we had started this special training program for which we were giving them training in the Foreign Office Academy because we thought that where we don't have embassies, these people 
will be our voice mm. because they have lived so, here. So, um, Ms. Ayla, when we talk about Pakistan's relations uh, with these African uh, nations, uh, how do you see these relations have evolved? Specifically, Pakistan's foreign policy has evolved over the years uh, with regards to Africa. Well, they have evolved very well. There is very strong affiliation, uh, bonds of friendship, uh, also there are many which we have a uh, similar faith with. Uh, irrespective of that, we have similar culture. If uh, you read in, you know, uh, Quran, there was mentioned that uh, these were the people who were the first civilization. They're the most civilized people. Hmm. It's the colonial mindset that uh, has made them look as though they are less. Hmm. They were always very civilized. When Islam was in threat, they went to Abyssinia to seek the support of um, an African country. Right. So, there is a, you know, a very deep bond which you can't express in words. How has it evolved? Uh, actually, to be honest, we also have to put our house in order. Uh, I have always been telling our chambers of commerce uh, that there should be a database with them. What are the things they want to export? Uh, Dr. Snan just mentioned, uh, you know, having commercial uh, offices in these countries. Mm. It's easier said than done because it, it's a two-way traffic. Uh, we have to have data on what they have to sell and they need to have data what we have to sell. And that mutuality of interest can then be translated into fortifying a relationship. So, I think uh, that is the main impediment that uh, they are, and I would always tell my African friends also that you also should look Pakistan <laughs> as we are looking. Of but course. now we have taken a step forward. Mm. We had this conference in which all these envoys were uh, invited and we said engage Africa. Mm. So, that is a step forward that right. there should be. So, look now Africa has evolved into, into engage Africa. Engage Africa so that you walk the talk. Right, walk the talk. So, uh, when we talk about Mr. Shahriyar, uh, walk the talk, but there are uh, some challenges that Pakistan is also facing, but African nations are also facing. How can uh, Pakistan cooperate with these African countries to address these uh, regional and global challenges? So, Mariam, I agree with the ambassador, um, and we don't have like a lot of diplomatic presence in mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, up till now, we had like only 17 missions out of 54 African nations. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is changing and now uh, as uh, Dr. Hasnan has also mentioned that we have opened uh, a lot of trade wings in uh, I think six uh, more countries and uh, what the Ministry of Commerce and Trade did was they basically got on board business, local business leaders to basically take these roles and they work very closely with the ambassadors in those uh, countries to basically promote tra trade between Pakistan and uh, uh, African nations. So there is like a lot more to be done, there is like a lot of potential. Uh, there, there is like a lot of like trade happening on the eastward sides of Africa that we have like noted, uh, especially when it comes to Kenya and Pakistan, there is like a, a historical trade volume. Uh, it is not optimal, but Pakistan imports a lot of tea from uh, Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the tea that we con consume in Pakistan comes from Kenya. Of or, uh, in 2020 and 2021, over 500 million dollars worth of tea was imported. It is going down uh, <laughs> and the last two years is like between 300 million, uh, but uh, most of our tea is like coming from there. Uh, other than that, Pakistan is also uh, has a lot of like uh, digital cooperation going on with Kenya. Uh, a lot of people don't know that their uh, national database is also being developed by Nadra. Of course. So, uh, so uh, there is like a lot a of work being done. major area of cooperation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but there is a lot of potential when we talk about uh, Pakistan and African countries' relations. We will be talking more about uh, the trade volume. How could it be increased? Uh, when we come back, we will be taking a short break here. And when we come back, we will be discussing with Dr. Hassan that uh, the economic relations and the prospects of economic relations with Pakistan and Africa. Take a break.
Welcome back. We are talking about prospects of economic relations between Pakistan and Africa. Uh, so, Dr. Hassan, when we talk about uh, economic relations with uh, between Pakistan and Africa, uh, what are the key areas of cooperation where there is a huge potential and we can cooperate in, tho in those areas? Well, I, I just wanted to, I mean, before I uh, answer this question, but I just wanted to request the foreign office there that they, their policies in terms of making and uh, developing relationship with Africa, and they have never explored the, uh, uh, I mean, the business and trade behaviors, uh, uh, and never they explore explore in a way that we can get the benefit out of it. We must have to know about the unemployment rate. There is eight percent, and the labor force participation rate is sixty-two percent, and the highest highest uh, labor rate and the lowest uh, lowest rate, wage rate is over there so we have a lot many potential we would never send our foreign office has never been uh, so much active in that scenario well if i talk about uh, i mean just to give a case that europe commitments of the 170 billion uh, is a huge eye opener for the countries who question the potential of africa state so the core objective of the european union african partnership is uh, strengthening the economic cooperation and promoting the sustainable development, I would suggest the following to enhance the economic relationship with African region and that is for the foreign office. Right. Uh, so, so uh, one is, I already told you, the commercial counselors and second is to, we have to initiate. They will not initiate because you are the power, uh, as I t uh, tell you about the uh, sub-Saharan African, uh, if the export volume uh, uh, we check with the China is about the 26, uh, uh, more than a 20, uh, 12 percent, uh, uh, is, uh, it is with the India is a 5.65, uh, export with the South Africa is 5.22. Mm -hmm. uh, so other yeah. countries, other major powers are engaging with Africa, keeping in mind the potential Africa has. Yes. So what has been the trade barriers so far? If we look about, you are talking about the, uh, you know, efficiency on the part of uh, our di diplomatic missions uh, while establishing and enhancing relations between uh, Pakistan and Africa. But uh, what, when we talk about these trade barriers, what has been the major trade barriers? Are these the bureaucratic uh, processes uh, that has been hindering the process so far? The whole of the foreign office, the whole of the foreign office, of course, the bureaucratic system, of, of course, the bureaucratic areas, yes, we don't have the commercial consulates. I mean, you can uh, ask the question to the, um, I mean, honorable ambassador. We are so much weak. It is not about the two-way process. We need to have, uh, we need to explore the market. We need to have the uh, lowest labor market. We need to explore our minerals and mine and what, what they need and what we need. We need to balance the import and exports. So, uh, just to add on, the Pakistan can aid African state in the transfer of establishment of the SME as a revenue source of the both countries. Then is a rice and textile. We completely uh, neglect that area uh, about the rice and textile product can be exported to Algeria, for which it highlights depends on the European countries in one such opportunities. Then is a biz Pakistan business community must be encouraged to explore the JVs. There is no JVs. There is no memorandum of understanding. Um, hmm. I have seen any single point. So we are not working right. hard. That, that's, what, uh, that's what Ambassador uh, Saiba was mentioning, uh, Dr. Hasnain, that there is a lot of potential and there is a need to enhance the connectivity and uh, relations between these African countries by employing more diplomatic missions. And Pakistan is obviously doing so. Uh, when we talk about uh, these economic relations, uh, Pakistani companies and Pakistani businessmen uh, are uh, doing businesses over there and there is a lot of potential over there as well. But, but when we talk about these bottlenecks and challenges, what are the major challenges that these Pakistani companies or businessmen could be facing uh, in uh, while doing businesses in Africa? So, uh, I mean, Pakistan's look Africa was announced a year ago. So how little or no progress was made. So. There are so many challenges could happen, but we need to ask again and again to cre uh, create a working paper and the outline drafted by the foreign office. So this is truly a sad situation. The Pakistan trade has stayed uh, stagnant at three billion dollar, so which is just three billion dollar for a quite some time now. Instead of growing, we see no progress made uh, on so many potential fronts that could be could have boosted Pakistan economy at large. It was in 2017 that Pakistan launched its Look Africa policy, 
and since then we have uh, seen no major progress. So it was progress. basically initiated in 2013 and uh, the policy was converted into Engage Africa policy in 2017. Yeah, before the Look Africa policy in 2013 has no witness and we, we, we cannot see any step or any signature step in that. So $3 billion is nothing been seen in 2003. I have all the stat over there and uh, we I, I can even share the Chinese export over uh, to the Africa or the exploration of the other countries over there. But in, it was in 2017 that Pakistan launched its Look Africa, which is appreciable appreciable and since then we have no no uh, seen no major progress despite the billion of the dollar worth of the potential we know that exists in the region sub-saharan african uh, imports for india worth is about 17 uh, thousand, uh, 17 thousand more than 17 thousand us billion uh, million uh, with the pattern share of the 6.98 percent while the exports are worth 11 more than 11 it is about 11621 million with the partner uh, partner share of the 5.65 percent which continue to raise so africa can be desirable export partner for oil and gas one and on the opportunity that has not been yet explored i think there are many many things that can need to do right if we are truly sincere about the gaining financial and economic benefit because there are lot many exploration we can go and explore there uh, 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 even in, uh, uh, as they have the low productivity low wages poor working condition they have mm. lack of mm. social protection limited access to the social service and the many other challenges which is faced uh, which has been faced by the african africans so perspective is lar large there that we can uh, check the chinese chinese have created this uh, 420 billion and more than 100 and of course, 100 of, of course SEC. and when we talk about china uh, bri is also an important project uh, that would be connecting asia to africa so we will be talking more about that but uh, ambassador naila i want to discuss about uh, what role uh, pakistani diplomatic missions have played in enhancing economic uh, cooperation between uh, pakistan and african countries specifically i want to talk about the progress after 2013 because like dr hasan is mentioning time and again that this policy has been a failure so far. Uh, Dr. Husnan should know that trade is by Ministry of Commerce mm -hmm. and the business people. Foreign Office is a facilitator of and course. we have facilitated. Mm -hmm. If your businessmen are not taking that initiative, mm -hmm. the diplomat is not going to sell things. Mm -hmm. We of are course. not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. So there should be a clear understanding uh, in those who make these remarks. It's not a failure, it's a success. And we have had a mm. lot of cooperation. Mm. As far uh, right now, you can see that there is this uh, South Africa Business Association mm. of uh, Pakistani businessmen who are uh, and joint. It's a joint venture that are working in different countries, not just the South Africa. Mm. So there has been development. Mm. I want to talk about these areas of cooperation yes. and uh, the role uh, Pakistani diplomatic missions have played in Pakistani enhancing. Pakistani diplomatic course. missions have played mm. excellent role. We have created that uh, platform for facilitation of trade, hmm. but the traders have to come. We have to have training in SMEDA, the small and medium enterprise uh, development authority to uh, prepare your businessmen for that. TDA has to play this role. Commerce has to play this role. So they sh you know, there should be a fulcrum for it, <laughs> you know. Foreign Office has done a great job. Right, right. So, Mr. Shahjar, when we talk about economic cooperation, uh, of course, uh, diplomatic missions also play their role. But when we talk about business community, they have to be taken on board as well. And they, uh, uh, what are some of the key challenges that uh, these business companies and business community face while do doing business in uh, African countries? And what could be done uh, to, uh, you know, address those challenges for creating ease of business uh, with these African countries? because we keep on discussing there's a huge potential in Africa. So, Mariam, um, historically, the government of Pakistan as well as the business community of Pakistan has looked at Europe to basically sell their products mm. because Europe gives, gives Pakistan the GSP plus status and a lot of Pakistani exports also go to the U.S. So, uh, I would like to admit that we haven't looked at Africa. Our business community hasn't looked at, looked at Africa and now they're like looking to expand into those areas. 
Hmm. So now, uh, after the trade conference that was held in 2020 in Nairobi, hmm. it was attended by over 200 business leaders from across hmm. uh, uh, various uh, African countries. And, and it was organized by Pakistan? Yes, sir, it was organized by hmm. the Ministry so of Commerce and Trade. So that is a huge success yes. Yes. on part of Pakistan. So a lot of like interest is generating, a lot of interest is coming. And now we will have to like, uh, uh, it shouldn't be a one-off event. So these like uh, trade fairs and trade conferences should be a consistent part of uh, the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs in partnership with the Ministry of Commerce and Trade. Uh, then obviously a lot of uh, exhibitions mm. that need to be uh, conducted. Uh, we can look at uh, Nairobi which is a, a business hub when it comes to Eastern Africa. Mm. We can also basically focus on our long-standing relationships with Egypt and uh, mm. uh, e Egypt can be used as a hub for Northern Africa. And we have to remember that Africa is the second largest con continent in the world. Of course. So it's a huge geographical mm. landmass. And They're it like is being seen as continent of the future. So all exactly. the major powers are looking uh, towards Africa, specifically after Russia, Ukraine crisis. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, there is a huge potential in Africa when we look at the natural resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dr. Hassan, when we talk about uh, the, the prospects, uh, uh, the current state of connectivity between Pakistan and Africa, how do you see it, uh, specifically in the context of BRI, Belt Road Initiative, uh, that was aimed to connect Asia to Africa and Europe. So what is the potential specifically when we talk about Gwadar port, how this is going to link Pakistan ultimately with uh, Africa? What are the prospects? Uh, see, uh, seriously, China has recently noted the bilateral trades in Africa more than $254 billion, increase in every, every way, agriculture, pharmaceutical, I mean, you just name it in every FDI possible. So Pakistan and China can create the possibility in Africa. We have the problem in oil and gas. We have the problem in the metal. We have the problem in the uh, uh, low productivity and the wage. So Ministry of Industries, uh, Commerce and uh, the Foreign Office, yet they never come up with the meetings. Uh, they are not creating any format or any uh, framework, uh, including all the socio-economic challenges. But they have not listed the low product. For example, there are low low productive challenges over there. So we can move our industry over there in uh, in relation with the China or the CPAC management. So uh, China has created a lot many SEGs over there. Why not we fix our our own SEGs? We have a nine economic zones. Why, uh, why not we, the uh, Foreign Office or uh, Ministry of Industries and Commerce, uh, write up the letter to uh, join the uh, nine economic uh, uh, areas? We we have the Russia Kai, we have the Bustan, we have the uh, Dhabeji. Why not they uh, they come and join us? So in this, uh, it is very excellent question. I must appreciate you on this. So and uh, Sharia Sab is rightly said on this uh, uh, th this area. Even though what you uh, just mentioned are two socio challenge that many developed countries face. I must say Pakistan can do this into the great economic opportunity provided we give a sincere try. Let's address each question. You uh, uh, as you mentioned, the low productivity. One is the low productivity, we need that. Pakistan have used the bilateral and diplomatic ties intelligently can assist the African countries with the challenge by op uh, appointing technocrats or trade ambassadors. This, these experts can then assist as a member of a socio-economic assistance. We can transfer local human resource and technology as well. For challenge, uh, challenges such as social service and social protection, Pakistan has a great national firms working that must be encouraged to establish their business in the African region as that we are not focusing on the CPAC one window operation. Then how can you work on the uh, look Africa policy? There, uh, there are a uh, lot of challenges so that you are pointing out, uh, uh, Dr. Hasnan. How to address these challenges? Because uh, we know about the economic situation of Pakistan as well. We have policy in place, but the implementation is a huge question, of course. Since from 1970, the SMEDA is working so bad, they have not created, even then there is a, a, all feasibility, pre-feasibility reports are redundant, completely uh, not in use. So they have mentioned all the ba bad uh, and the no feasibility, it is quite 10 years back. Uh, feasibility is mentioned over there. Then is a national productivity organization. They are not working as much as they have to do. 
Under the Ministry of Industry, there are uh, uh, 53 organizations has been working and they are loaded over on the government, but they are not efficiently working on any of the progress. So how can we explore any of the human resources or the business placement areas? So this uh, seminars and challenges, the business community are doing that. The Chamber of Commerce wanted to do that. The Faisalabad Chamber of Commerce, Islamabad Chamber of Commerce, they wanted to explore the uh, areas, but Pakistan Foreign Office uh, and the and the ministries are not giving them this, the 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 safe and specific area and specify the policy area and then create the diplomatic right, area. Right, right, right. We will be talking about these challenges that. Uh, the, uh, that these business community could be facing while doing business in uh, African countries. We have to take a short break here. Welcome back. We are talking about Pakistan and African countries' relations. Uh, the challenges we are facing, um, uh, we were discussing, but uh, Ambassador Naila, when we talk about um, uh, the connectivity, increasing connectivity and increasing cooperation between Pakistan and Africa, uh, what are the major initiatives that are taken in the recent part by the Pakistani government and Africa, uh, African governments, different African countries to enhance this cooperation? Like you earlier mentioned about yes. this important uh, uh, conference that took place in 2020. And also that there's this uh, South Africa Business Association in which uh, representatives from the business community of the two sides are working together, not only in South Africa, but other African countries as well. Uh, there have been many uh, agreements signed uh, with uh, countries like Kenya, like mm. Nigeria, mm. Uh, like South Africa. Mm. Cultural exchange programs Cultural are also, exchanges an are also going of on. Information so technology, let's talk about these. Sharia yes, Sarnika. yes. I want to talk about uh, these knowledge sharing programs, knowledge transfer sharing of program. uh, technology programs. Pharma is a great uh, export, as Dr. Hasnan mentioned. Of course. Uh, uh, there are many areas, but uh, they want uh, scholarships in your educational, te technical educational institutions to. Uh, have this transfer of knowledge. Um, CPAC is a good platform, but you must understand that Africa has been decolonized from French, uh, British, uh, Portuguese. All these countries, they still have their roots there. There are many countries that do not uh, do business in their own currency. They have to go through French currency to be able to do business. So, these are so the barriers. These are the barriers because uh, they are not even letting China move comfortably there. They are wanting to deter Chinese expansion. Uh, although China is not expansionist, China is promoting it is trade uh, or mm. oriented. Mm. They are working on economic diplomacy and Pakistan is also, Pakistan's foreign office is also working on economic diplomacy and we can synergize but we must understand the ground realities in Africa to be able to understand the impediments. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, uh, Mr. Shahiyar, when we talk about uh, CPAC specifically, uh, what are some of the major, uh, you know, initiatives or the projects uh, that could be taken uh, place in uh, these African and Pakistani, you know, border areas, specifically in the uh, fields of trade and transportation to enhance connectivity? So, Mariam, Pakistan can basically view uh, Africa from the lens of the overall BRI uh, framework. Mm. So, uh, as uh, uh, Ambassador Saab has like very uh, rightly mentioned, that uh, Western and uh, North and Western Africa is more francophone. Mm. So they speak French and they are more connected with Europe. Uh, very recently, China has basically made a lot of investments <coughs> in Northern Africa, uh, Central Africa, and mm. Eastern Africa. So, uh, we also need to understand that Africa as a conf continent, uh, because of like sheer size, it's not really connected within itself as well. Hmm. So, there are like not a lot of networks, there's like not even like a lot of like uh, direct flights from East Africa to West Africa. 
and mm. these uh, flights take a long time because of the sheer mm. size of uh, the continent. So what infrastructure uh, projects should be developed in these areas? So what China uh, currently is doing that it has developed uh, uh, ports in uh, mm. Eastern Africa, especially the Mombasa port. And it's also like supporting uh, uh, Eastern uh, African economies by developing railway routes and uh, road networks as well. So Pakistan has this chance in which the in the overall BRI framework, Pakistan can connect the Gawadar port to the port in Mombasa. Hmm. And uh, there are also talks uh, in uh, developing uh, port linkages between the ports of Algeria. Hmm. and uh, uh, Gawadar hmm. and we know Algeria is uh, very rich in oil production hmm. Hmm. and that's hmm. like one area where Pakistan can cooperate hmm. and once we connect all of these northern uh, hmm. African ports. Gawadar port can also be used as a major hub for economic Yes exactly yes. so even if uh, hmm. Algeria wants to look eastwards hmm. Hmm. Uh, Gawadar port uh, uh, gives it uh, an opportunity to access Central Asia and uh, 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 South Asia as well through the Gawadar port. So these are like some areas where we can like start working and we ha also have to like uh, uh, note that Africa overall largely is an import led uh, economies. Hmm. So uh, Pakistan when it like focuses on uh, uh, Africa for its exports I think that's like somewhere we can basically focus on. Uh, if we talk about our special economic zones, it would be very difficult for African eco economies to move out and like start investing in Pakistan. Mm. They would like want to like look inwards first. So uh, these are the uh, few areas where we can right, focus. Right, right. So Dr. Hasdan, there is a lot of potential when we talk about uh, these different areas of cooperation. Uh, but uh, when uh, enhancing the cooperation between Pakistan er and Africa, uh, what are the geopolitical, uh, you know, implications of uh, these uh, uh, this cooperation? And how would the global powers would be looking at it? Because like you earlier mentioned that US is investing in uh, Africa, uh, India uh, uh, from this region is also investing in Africa. So what would be the implications? Very, very important question, uh, although it is a very pertinent. See, so if we check just with the trade with Africa, main reason of the low trade volume has been low level of the agreement of Pakistan with Africa, one. So second question was, uh, I mean, we have to clarify this, that there is a very smooth difference. I mean, all the Chinese company or the, uh, for the oil, for the IT, for the infrastructure, special economic zones, hundred of the billion dollars and uh, more than two, 220 billion dollar is expansion uh, of uh, a trade volume uh, in Africa from the China. Uh, uh, and they are moving in a maximum way. They are maximizing everything. Now, the important question is why country uh, countries investing in Africa? One is the most significant level is the labor force in Africa is diverse, the rapid growing according to the international labor force, which is what we call it ILO. And then is the uh, um, rich, uh, few, uh, rich in fuel and uh, oil. Uh, then is uh, uh, the this rich in natural resources. There are uh, you know uh, almost forty percent uh, of diamonds are in uh, African countries. Uh, like and other major minerals are also in uh, you know uh, African countries. So there is a huge potential. As I told you earlier about the pharmaceuticals. So we must we have the we have the major flaw down in the, the, the pharmaceutical area why we are not working in the pharmaceutical area we have to have the uh, major market why we are working uh, 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 focusing on the india why we are not going to the 70 plus chemicals from the from from africa so we are not uh, using this way this route of course there is a smooth way there is a, a preferential trade agreement there is a liberate tech, uh, trade agreement with africa so there is no problem we uh, we have to admit that we have not working on uh, these area we have to transform uh, in in relation with the foreign uh, office first foreign office must have to take this initiative initiate then uh, ministry of industries and uh, ministry of uh, ministry of industry and commerce uh, ministry of industry and commerce is been very very i mean uh, uh, depriving that way they are um, I mean, not effectively working and exploring the uh, trade areas. So, uh, potentially what I, uh, 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 I mean, um, dare to uh, suggest that they must right, have... Right, right. There is a huge potential. So, uh, 
there's a huge poten potential. So, Ms. Naila, when we talk about the potential, what steps should be taken by the Pakistani government uh, and other, you know, stakeholders in business community to enhance specifically the economic cooperation between Pakistan and Africa? Because we keep on discussing there's a huge potential and this is being seen as, you know, continent of the century. Major powers are looking towards Africa. What needs to be done? Uh, thank you so much. It is a very uh, important question. Uh, the African countries not all have a very well developed infrastructure. Mm, mm. China is going out of its way to develop it <coughs> to its own mm. benefit so that it can get uh, its business going. Uh, Pakistan does not have that wherewithal. So like uh, Shahid Saab said, <coughs> we can use the CPEC, uh, the BRI uh, as a platform mm. to move forward on that. We should have more joint trade committee meetings in which not only the government authorities but business representatives should also be present from both sides to discuss areas of mutual interest where it can be done. Hmm, hmm. And uh, there are a lot of areas which can be identified and like I mentioned before also, there is a lack of understanding of Africa here. Hmm. This kind of remarks that you hear is because of lack of understanding of the ground reality. Uh, we have to have good database hmm. so that if you are a business person, you want to start a business, you should know which of the African countries has hmm. market for that. Of course, because these are 54 countries we are talking about exactly. and there is a lot of diversity uh, in these countries. Indeed, so it's hmm. not like you are throwing things in Africa just like that. Each hmm. country has its own rules, regulations, hmm. interests on potential so, uh, and potential so uh, we should have a good database hmm. in pakistan on those countries and these trade offices that have been open should have full data on what pakistan's potential hmm. is and which are the areas where your business people are interested like earlier on it was mentioned that traditionally our businessmen look at europe hmm. and uh, north america for their businesses hmm they don't have appetite to go to Africa or Latin America where there is greater facility. Mm. And lack of understanding has been a major hurdle in this regard. Indeed, and that's why we thought of look Africa that you develop that mm. understanding. Mm. And that understanding is now taking place. So in that context, it's very successful that now we are talking, we have a whole TV program on this. This itself is reflective that we are looking at Africa and we are looking to engage with Africa. Africa as a continent and on bilateral levels also mm. we are working together. Mm. Bilateral and multilateral as well. Exactly. So uh, Mr. Sheriyar when we talk about uh, these challenges and steps that should be taken, what in mm. your opinion uh, you know steps should be taken by Pakistani and African countries uh, to address these common economic challenges for enhanced prosperity and cooperation? So, Mariam, interestingly enough, when we are having this discussion right now, the Minister for Commerce and Trade of Kenya is in Pakistan mm. for uh, trade talks with the Ministry of Commerce and Trade. And uh, areas of mutual interest are being shared and they are being discussed. So, uh, that's like one good starting point that a lot of like other African countries, they should be like invited more as Ambassador Saab has also mm. like mentioned mm. for more like bilat bilateral discussions mm. on what uh, the needs of the African countries are and how Pakistan can basically fulfill those needs. Uh, some of the areas that uh, Pakistan is already working on is like exports of rice. Hmm. Then there is like also uh, when we talk about challenges uh, related to uh, the balance of payments that Pakistan is like going through right now. Even with the Minister of Commerce and Trade, we are discussing some sort of like barter arrangement hmm. so hmm. that the balance of trade can be met. Uh, hmm. And uh, you know, like all of these uh, products incentives can be, be incentives are to, also yes. given. So textile, machinery, vaccines, like health-related products, pharmaceuticals. Africa is an open market that can uh, basically get Pakistan's products. Other than that, they are high quality and very cheap products. Hmm. So we also have to like know what the buying power of the African uh, economies are, and that is a very good entry point for Pakistan to basically uh, take forward Pakistan's uh, low-cost products have a much 
higher chance of being uh, uh, uptaken by mm. the African countries rather than, uh, you know, European countries mm. or uh, uh, American countries. Of course, and yeah. when we talk about these areas of cooperation, there are common challenges like we yes. discussed earlier, common challenges that Pakistan and African countries are mm. facing uh, when we talk about the youth bulge Pakistan is yes. facing. and there Security is, issues. Of course, the yeah. security issues. Yeah. Uh, Pakistan has been, uh, you know, victim of terrorism and uh, likewise in Africa, yeah. they have countered. Pakistan has contributed in... Uh, UN peacekeeping missions as yes. well. I want to talk about that, that mm -hmm. how could these kinds of initiatives uh, could be taken to enhance cooperation between Pakistan and Africa? So European. when it comes to like security challenges, as you've mentioned, Pakistan is one of the largest contributors to the US of peacekeeping course. mission in mm. all of the fragile uh, states that are there in uh, Africa. Mm. Mm. And that is uh, an area where Pakistan has built a lot of like goodwill with the people of uh, Africa and the nations that are like very politically unstable and uh, suffering from terrorism. Uh, when we talk about Nigeria, they have been going through a huge, uh, uh, you know, insurgency by Hok Boko Haram. If we talk about Sudan, like they have Al-Shabaab. So Pakistan has that capacity and the experience that can be shared by those with those countries because Pakistan has also like uh, basically gone through a lot of insurgency as has the capacity to offer uh, those countries and like build uh, goodwill. And that goodwill then can be translated into uh, trade agreements and uh, uh, capacity building of their forces as well as connections between the business communities of the two countries. Of course, there is a lot of potential. Thank you very much, Mr. Shah Yar Khan, uh, for uh, your opinion uh, and insights today. Thank you very much, Ambassador uh, Naila Chohan, for joining us in today's program. Thank you very much, Dr. Hasnain Javed, for joining in today's program. In today's program, we talked about Pakistan's relations with African countries. Uh, we discussed about the progress of Look uh, Africa and Engage Africa policy. There are a lot of challenges when we talk about Pakistan's relations with these African countries. But despite these challenges, there is a lot of potential, lot of common ground, lot of areas of cooperation in which Pakistan and African countries can work together for enhanced cooperation and prosperity. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.